up YouTube, Jason here, Morph Mixology Reptiles. Welcome back to the channel and another video. This one's gonna be super quick and easy. Actually, just got lucky that this all timed out the way it did. You know, I get asked all the time on here and on Facebook and on Instagram, how do I know if my ball python is gravid or pregnant? How do I know if their follicles are growing? What's the ovulation? What's the lay date? How, and yada, 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 right? So there are some kind of rules of thumb and like timelines that we follow. Um, a lot of it I just tell people is uh, you kind of play it by ear, you kind of learn your animals, you see them acting different, you see their size is a little different, stuff like that. But if you're paying attention, you should be able to catch your ovulation. It's uh, usually a 24 to 48 hour idea. Um, so if you're checking your snakes at least once a day, theoretically you should see it. Uh, but when you do, you'll know it for real. So let me show you. I actually have a girl here that is blowing up in an ovulation right now. Um, and it's like the most obvious one I've ever seen. So I was gonna show you that, kind of just get you a feel of what it looks like during the breeding process between building and ovulation. All right, so to start is what we're gonna do. I'll show you one that looks kind of normal, okay? So if you're paying attention to your, your, your snakes and that as they're aging, or as they're going into the breeding season and whatnot, you'll see that they'll start getting a bit bigger, obviously. You know, they'll get thicker in the bot in the middle half, bottom third and whatnot. You should sometimes be able to feel follicles underneath or eggs underneath. I don't have an ultrasound, so I can't go on that obviously. But you also saw like super sensitive she is, real touchy, real defensive. Um, a lot of times they'll actually act like they're aggressive or even strike because they're getting, they're nesting. They're getting ready to protect their nest once they lay their eggs. But you can just kind of see, you know, you know your girls, they start to get a little bit bigger, but that's pretty normal. So this might be kind of hard to, you might miss your ovulation on here. This is what I would call, um, well, this, I know this girl in particular is past building, but this look is kind of what I would call like building, right? <sighs> Let me show you the clown above her by comparison. This girl is massive. She is so thick through here, through this last section and that, and if you get her to move and stretch out a little bit here, you can just see this just body mass right here is just huge, like, right? So you might mistake this and say, wow, that's, that, she's just, giant right here. This is ovulation, right? Well, not necessarily. This girl happens to be about ready to lay. She's due in, at the time of filming this video, about seven days. Um, and you can tell that because one of the things, if you, if you miss the ovulation and you track your sheds and whatnot, you start to see this ridge that forms kind of along the spine. The spine starts to triangle a little bit. And then if you look close, a lot of the scales start to get like really blown apart. It's really easy on dark snakes to see because you see the white skin underneath. So you can see the scales are starting to really spread all the way throughout, especially down here by the tail. So she's starting to build that spine. You can it's starting to expose. You can see it up here for sure. See how it's starting to expose right here. And then obviously the blown apart scales. This curl's about ready to go. So I'm not gonna screw with her too much. Now, let me show you what an actual ovulation looks like. Hopefully this picks us up on camera because it is clear as day in person. Now she's probably gonna be fairly touchy because one of the things that happens during the ovulation is the area is really tight, really hard, and very sensitive. But can you guys see this right here? Look at from this point to this point, look at how wide that section gets right there. There, hopefully, I think I, I think you can see it in this angle here. I'm trying to watch her head too while I do this. But you see how it goes, big bump here, just like if I move some of this bedding out of the way. See, there's just this massive bulge right here. It's huge. And it's already started down. It was really big about three hours ago, but you straighten them out and you can really start to get a feel because you look at the size of the rest of her body, right? And then look at the size of this piece here. Just, and again, it's very, very hard and very rigid 
so you don't want to really screw with them too much because they're i mean i don't know if it's painful but this is a big deal like their body is really really trying hard to get these follicles ready okay one other sign you can tell if you think you've got an ovulation you're like man this looks pretty good but this girl's always been huge so i'm not 100 percent sure let me see if i can show you here without screwing with her too much you look what's you look for what's called tail suck so we'll grab her tail here and turn her upside down you see that ridge see how it looks like her tail is completely indented as if you like sucked the air out of it starting about right here there's just this line that goes down the middle and it you can see the concave in that see that it's called tail suck that is a dead giveaway because all of the mass is now up in here right and it's just pulling on look at how thick that is right in the middle you can see that double bump ridge right here it's because this is all really really blown out so this is a hundred percent an ovulation right there so now what does that mean for your timeline well here's what i do and like i said this is only my second season i'm hardly an expert at this but starting in about january or so we start put introducing our first males usually sometime just before right around halloween and if we start seeing locks in that usually sometime around january mid-january i'll start tracking sheds every time a snake sheds i'll put a date on the tub that is 30 days past the time they shed the reason i do that is because one of two things i guess one of three things will happen at that at or around that 30 day point either nothing which means it's just a regular shed and that's very common or the second option is you'll get an ovulation because it's roughly 30 days from a pre-ovulation shed to an ovulation or if you missed the ovul ovulation somehow which happens i had a few last year that i never saw ovulate uh then you'll you you could get eggs because from a post ovulation shed or a pre lay shed you it'll it's often called the same thing or often called two different things but those are the same terms post ovulation shed or pre lay shed some people use the post ovulation because there's a pre ovulation as well so uh, i call it pre lay most people or a lot of people call it post ovulation either way from 30 days from that shed roughly give or take you should be on eggs anywhere between like 30 to 35 sometimes up to 40 I had one go 46 days last year. That's pretty long. Um, I've had people tell me if you get anything longer than about 50 days past a prelay and you knew it was a prelay for sure, for a fact, um, that you want to kind of maybe keep an eye on that. But that's a, a video, video for a different day. So those are your three options. 30 days from that shed, either nothing, ovulation, or eggs. So, like I said, I start in January putting dates, 30 day dates, every time I get a shed. And so like, uh, I had one on this one, for instance, it said, I think February you know, 18th or whatever it was. February 18th comes and goes. She does not look at all different. There's obviously no eggs. I go about 10 days past that, still doesn't look any different, no eggs. I'll race it off of there, wait for the next shed. In the case of this one, you notice that that girl we just looked at, that her label is red. That date is an ovulation shed day, a post ovulation or a pre lay shed date. So because I saw the ovulation without a shadow of a doubt, that was very clear, right? I put, because the ovulation happens about 24 to 48 hours and doesn't really, it doesn't last all that long. It happens pretty quick. Um, I put a 21 day date on that tub because uh, typically on average somewhere around 21 days about three weeks after that ovulation there will be the post ovulation pre lay shed and then I'll change that number to a 30 day date um, and that'll be eggs and in that case we know it's eggs that's what this date is this 320 right here, just coming up in a couple days here now on, uh, on Katniss, that leopard lesser pastel girl, I'll show you. Look at this girl, all bedded down, 
rolled up like a cinnamon roll and nesting ready to go so that 320 date on here is absolutely pre-lay or is our lay date because I caught her ovulation it looked like she swallowed a nerf football just like that other girl I marked 21 days on here in red and right on cue, like within a day, either direction, right on cue, she lay, or she shed, which is exactly what you like to see if you're scheduling or you're counting all the dates like this. So sometime between 3.18 and 3.25, I should open that tub and she should be sitting on eggs. So that's about it i just wanted to show you that i saw this ovulation and i get a lot of questions about that and my dates and how i track it and how i know when eggs are coming or think i know when eggs are coming so i just wanted to show you that so you so you understand what a ovulation looks like as opposed to one that's just building or one that's just big in general uh, a couple of those cues that really big obvious section the uh, like double bump down the side because the belly's blown out and then that tail suck, that's a huge one. That's very obvious. Um, and then yeah, tracking sheds after, after the first, the first of the year or so, track the sheds. Start watching your 30 day dates because that'll either be ovulation or eggs typically. If you catch the ovulation, 21 days after that should be a shed thereabouts. 30 days after that, you should have eggs. I hope that helped you guys understand a little bit about the system, the timeline and what to look for if it did make sure you hit that thumbs up make sure you're subscribed to the channel obviously we've got eggs coming very soon so i'm very excited about that we got some really really cool stuff in the works here this year um, so make sure you're subscribed hit the notification bell so you know when we put up new content and if you missed it saturday night this past saturday night we did a random pop-up live stream so if you're got the notification bell hit you would know that we did that and you would know when I do the next one because it's gonna be random so anyway I'm gonna head out of here guys we got rodents defrosting for tomorrow's feeding I've got the midnight shift tonight so I'm gonna get to work but I hope you learned something and I'll see you guys in the next video see ya